Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Sure has been a while since I've just had a nice good old sit down with you guys. Well, today I'm going to be talking about something that has been on my mind for quite some time now. This topic being aesthetic in video games. Now I'm sure some of you guys may be asking, what even is aesthetic other than a meme? Well, the dictionary definition is aesthetic. A set of principles underlining and guiding the work of a particular artist. Basically meaning what drove something to be created and how it is unique. So why am I even talking about aesthetic in video games? Well, aesthetic is something that is vital to a game's success. Without aesthetic, a game doesn't really have a clear set way to set itself apart from the competition. Now, I'm sure some of you guys may know what I'm talking about here. So you may be asking, why did I use this word to describe what most of us would simply refer to as style? Well, that's because most of us use the word style to describe what makes a game unique, when in fact, the word only describes the physical representation of said game. Meanwhile, aesthetic talks about the physical style, the atmosphere, and themes of the game, which is essentially the personality of a game. A good example of a game stuffed with style is a game that I imagine most of you guys have played, Team Borders 2. This game has cartoony graphics and an early 70s setting, thus giving the game a unique physical appearance. This is called the game's style, as I mentioned earlier. Now, in case you have not played the game, I assure you there is more to what makes TF2 rather than just the physical appearances. The game is a team-based first-person shooter with nine distinct classes with many different playstyles per class. Not to mention, the game kind of has a very silly vibe to it, with giving weapons such as a fish, a sandwich, and even an icicle. There is a massive online community to this game, which involves an entire economy, similar to that of CSGO. This, in combination with the physical style, creates the aesthetic which sets it apart from the competition. Another good example would be games like Grand Theft Auto. At a quick glance, this game appears to be nothing more than the generic open-world realistic shooter game. But what gives this game its unique aesthetic is not its art style, but its use of over-the-top violence and satire. Grand Theft Auto has been known for its use of violence and crime, but it is also riddled with jokes about our mindless consumerism to set itself apart from games with similar graphics and gameplay features like Saints Row 3. Grand Theft Auto does not rely on its looks to stand out from the crowd, because the over-exaggerated themes are so heavily present, it is able to set itself apart from similar games. Both of these games thrive because they're able to set themselves apart from the competition by unique aesthetic, albeit their aesthetic is more known for different reasons. TF2 because of its style, and GTA because of its atmosphere. Don't get me wrong, games need to have solid gameplay as well as this unique identification. Otherwise, they look pretty and seem awesome, but then turn out to be super bland. Cough, cough. No Man's Sky. Cough, cough. With that said, don't undermine the importance of aesthetic. Some games come out with great gameplay, unique ideas, and fascinating stories, but then flop soon after release. An example of this would be games like Mafia 3. This game seemed promising, and a lot of people talked about it when it released, but then it dribbled out soon after. The reason why is because the aesthetic wasn't unique enough to separate it from competition. Because Mafia 3 was basically GTA in the South during the 60s. It was a relatively good game, but it was not nearly as successful as GTA 5 because it didn't separate itself enough from the competition. Another game that doesn't appear to have a unique aesthetic is Dark Souls. It's another action, third-person, medieval game. It doesn't stand out too much. But if that's the case, why is Dark Souls so successful? Shouldn't Dark Souls have bombed and died away? So what I want you to do is I want you to take a brief moment to think about what sets Dark Souls apart from other games. Got it? Alright, here we go. Some people may say that it uses its disturbing graphics and bizarre looking creatures, sets it apart from other games, but I know plenty of games that have weird, ugly creatures that you fight. I would say that the use of difficulty is what sets it apart from other games. This intense difficulty makes players very weary when exploring the map, which provides it a unique atmosphere that not a lot of games have. However, aesthetic is subjective, so if you believe what makes Dark Souls unique is its customization or whatever, you can believe in that. You know, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying my personal belief is that Dark Souls stands out because of its difficulty. Not a lot of games have that intense difficulty, you know? But the whole point of talking about Dark Souls is to demonstrate that aesthetic comes in many different forms, and all successful games have some sort of unique aesthetic. It doesn't have to be physical appearance, but it can be. There's not a single successful game that does not set itself apart from competitors. Or, at least that I know of. Maybe there is this super bland game that is huge on the internet that I don't know of. But I think my theory that games need aesthetic holds up pretty well. After all, I do believe that this combination of atmosphere, style, and themes is almost as important as the gameplay itself. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. 
I'm not saying I'm a game developer or someone who religiously studies games. I'm just a guy who has this theory that games without personality will flop no matter how much you hype them. Here's looking at you, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah.